if you're like most animals, you have long dreamed of playing Goog Earth Flight Simulator with a real joystick. Problems happen when you try actually running Goog Earth Flight Simulator. You go in to options navigation you find non-mouse controller and in here it says enable controller and that's pretty much it in older versions they used to have an option for a joystick that got taken away they never really supported joysticks in Linux at all there were uh, random artifacts from the Windows version of Flight Simulator that had joystick-like parameters if you search through the op directory but it was never supported and it never will be so what the Lion Kingdom devised was a program called Goog Hotas and when you run this it reads events from a joystick plugged in to a computer and it converts those events into key press and mouse events as if you were actually typing and using a mouse. So let's start up Flight Simulator. Control A. Now let's pause it. And as you can see, we're over some random part of the ocean. With Goog Hotas running, you see we have part of the heads-up display highlighted by a box it's actually capturing this region of the heads-up display before we can use the joystick we have to center the box over this user input section of the flight simulator and we have controls to resize the box and we also have controls to adjust the mouse sensitivity the problem is when Goog Hotas is running, you can't touch the joystick when the X term is active. You have to activate the flight simulator window before you can touch the joystick. Otherwise, you'll send false key press events into Goog Hotas and you'll crash it. So now with the flight simulator window active, Goog Hotas running, when I move the joystick, it's sending false mouse events into the flight simulator. When I move the throttle, it's sending false key press events as if someone was telling it to actually adjust the throttle. Problem is what it's doing is it's screen capturing the current status of the user interface and it's using a chroma key. So if anything green is inside the flight simulator window, it might misread that as the current status of the user input. So right here, it's getting confused and it's sending uh, inaccurate key press events for the throttle. It's probably reading a false color in the ocean background. And here, if you rotate the joystick, you're adjusting the rudder. Here, if you're adjusting aileron, here you're adjusting elevator. We also have controls here for flaps. And we control the gear with the trigger. The, the hat switch controls where you're looking on the screen. As with the default flight simulator, there's no way to automatically recenter the point of view. You just have to remember how many clicks you gave it. There are also buttons here to control the brake and there are buttons here to control the trim of the pitch. So let's go ahead and go to another location. The best place to fly in Goog Earth was always Bergen, Norway. It had lots of 
canyons to fly around. It had lots of three-dimensional buildings. So if we zoom in on this, hit Control A, center the mouse, then we pause it, then center the mouse, capture the mouse, Pausing and unpausing is handled by the red button. There it goes. Let's raise the flaps. Another control is this paddle switch. Adjust the yaw trim. Right now, pitch seems trimmed. Let's go ahead and pitch up. throttle up. This may or may not be easier than flying with the mouse and the keyboard. At least for controlling throttle and trimming it's much easier but the aileron and the elevator with the joystick tends to be a little finicky depending, depending on how much mouse gain you've set. So let's do a real slow pass with the flaps at full and the gear lowered. Now you could just use Microsoft Flight Simulator if you want a joystick. But Goog Earth still has the best real-world graphics. The uh, estimated 3D buildings in Flight Simulator are just nowhere close. Now unfortunately one of the problems with this is there can only be one key press at a time. So adjusting throttle while doing other stuff with the flaps and the gear and the joystick sometimes won't work. And that's along with other problems where the X server will just suddenly stop accepting keyboard input from the Goog Hotas emulator. So we're going to try again. Trying to slow down with gear and flaps fly through this canyon. Especially if you're using the rudder input by twisting the joystick, that actually generates key press events. So that can prevent you from adjusting the throttle. Most of the time, you don't notice it. So, the physics system in Goog Flight Simulator doesn't exist. It goes faster as it goes lower. But with Goog Flight Simulator, you don't really care about the accuracy of the simulation as much as the quality of the graphics. So let's slow down. Let's fly through some buildings. And there's also elevator trim. If we go. Can hit the elevator trim buttons X and O. So here with this with the actual goob data, 
you get very nice 3D buildings to fly through based on actual elevation data and not based on estimations and predictions that Flight Simulator does. And it gives you a really nice sensation of speed. So now we're going to try to land at the airport. the airport. It's tricky to slow down because Google Flight Simulator doesn't doesn't have any actual spoilers or speed brakes. It just has gear and flaps. So you're trying to simulate an air brake with the gear and the flaps. Might be coming in a little, a little too slow. And, and then we hit the brakes. You can also steer by pressing one or the other button. Right here, I'm trying to steer it left. And then you hit the right button, you can steer it right. and then you can throttle up. It might have missed one of the uh, speed brake button presses, so it might pull to the right. And then you can look behind you. Raise the gear. Raise the flaps. So in Goog Flight Simulator, the physics is so bad, it gets slower as you go higher and faster as you go lower, instead of a real airplane that would go faster as you go higher. So d despite a few artifacts where it misreads the heads-up display and the user input status, it's overall a better experience than flying with the joy flying with the keyboard. <laughs> Eventually it becomes natural to twist the joystick to the right as you bank in order to make a coordinated turn. One of the things lions used to do is land in this tiny lake here. Because in Goog Flight Simulator, you can land on water, you can fly underwater. Let's see if it picks up the throttle inputs. So sometimes you get strange keyboard artifacts where it won't pick up any throttle inputs. Sometimes keys might get stuck.
if you're really good, you can land on top of these hills. It's like crashed into the water. So that's Goog Earth Flight Simulator with the T-Flight Hotas. And as always, I hope you learned something.